The world we envisioned came true. It's not the world we had in 1988 or 89 when we started. It's the world of today. It's the world we envisioned anime being recognized as the art form that it is. We envisioned people loving and collecting Studio Ghibli movies. We, we, we wished that. that wasn't, the world wasn't like that when we were doing it. We, we dreamed that. And that world came true. And I think we played a part in making that happen. Well, you guys seen it. I am now going to be paying homage to a very special anime company called Streamline Pictures. Now, this isn't a full-fledged history lesson or anything like that, but this is, however, about a company that may have started one of the most powerful trends in anime dubbing history. A lot of companies would not be where they are today without this company. And if you guys want a full-fledged history lesson on Streamline Pictures, I recommend reading this blog written. Um, I don't remember the name of the writer, but I had the blog saved. And this blog was saved to actually help me write out the story to, um, well, to this little review hom homage that I'm going to do for Streamline. I put the link at the very bottom of my description. Check it out. You guys will probably really like some of the history lessons and stuff in between it. The other day, I interviewed Jerry Beck, who was a co-founder of Streamline Pictures. And he was just interesting and great to talk to. And Streamline is one of my favorite dubbing companies of all time. I mean, seriously, of all time. And I believe it doesn't get enough recognition that it deserves. So we're going to dive into it and talk about it today. Let's get to it. In 1988, a company was named and formed by both Jerry Beck, Carl Meck, and Fred Patton. And I've got to say, the anime company would not be what it is today without this group of people here. Streamline Pictures. And I've got to say, it's pretty damn awesome. These guys took a very good look at anime and they dubbed it a way that anime is being dubbed for today. And honestly, without their impression of Streamline, we wouldn't have the anime we have today dubbed the way we needed. Before these guys came around, we were getting anime that was edited heavily, like the original Speed Racer from the 60s and 70s, and Sailor Moon with Deke Entertainment, and so on. It still went further after that. The fun fact is, these guys did some of the greatest animes ever put to film. And they were the first ones to give these versions an English translation. You've got Lupin the Third, uh, Castle of Cagliostro, Akira, uh, Project Eden. Several anime was brought to life because of this company. And it was given the English dub because of this company's effort that was put in. They left the original Japanese music intact. They left everything intact that needed to be left. And they left it uncut and didn't alter the footage by any means necessary. They may have altered the name slightly in, say, Akira and etc. But without this company, we wouldn't have what we have today. And I've got to say, I'm honored to be actually paying an homage to one of my favorite dubbing companies. A company that was truly ahead of its time. So... What do I got to say, but this is going to be a great look through at some of their works. And it's pretty sad to say that their stuff is not all of it got physical releases. That's what they need. I guess I'll start with things you guys probably didn't know. Did you know that Kiki's Delivery Service actually has two English dubs? For those who did know it, congratulations. You guys are just as big as fucking nerds as me. Anyway... I guess I'll just listen to the two Kikis and see how similar or how different they sound, kind of like I did with Akira. So, let's give it a listen. Mom! Hey, I decided! Oh! Hi, Miss Dora. It's gonna be a completely clear night tonight. I heard the weather forecast, and there's gonna be a big full moon, Mom! Did you bring your father's radio to the park without permission again? Is it okay? Please, I'm sorry! Well... Happy to see you, Miss Dora. Mom, my mind's made up, and I've decided it's tonight! What do you mean, you... But you said you were going to put it off a month. Yeah, but the next full moon might be on a cloudy night. I want to make sure I leave on a perfect night. 
Father's radio again without asking. Don't worry, he doesn't mind. Please. They sound kind of similar, don't they? I find it really odd that, well, Disney would actually try to make it sound so similar to the original dub. It's kind of like they were fans of the original dub and they didn't want to miss paying homage to it. This video isn't going to be a dub comparison, which sounds better to me. I'm just showing you guys that there are other versions of this movie. And honestly, those versions of the movie do not need to be ignored. This version of Kiki did not get a physical release like the Disney version. So, yeah. And although I do like the Disney version, I would like to see the other version. I mean, Akira got released on to uh, Blu-ray or DVD with its extra dub, and that took almost 20 years. Funimation bought the rights to Akira, and they finally put the streamlined dub on the track. One of the few things that Funimation did actually good, they brought us back the track that we wanted to hear. So, in all honesty, Funny actually did something right, which is very crazy. And speaking of Akira, I know that you guys know that there are two dubs of it, but let's listen and compare too, because remember, Streamline brought us a lot of these movies. Sky all over the street! Enough! They can't do this! Hey, we were worried about you. I wish you'd just go away and leave me alone. What? You think I'm a loser? It's not my fault I was smaller! Well, there'll come a day when I'll show all of you! Don't you forget it! Dad, I'll split his friggin' head open! Shut up! Don't order me around! We were just worried. Why do you always have to try to save me? I could handle it on my own. Yeah, I admit, I've gotten beaten before. But I won't always be on the receiving end. You hear that? Do you understand? Again, like I was saying, Streamline has brought us a lot of stuff. And there are other anime that they happen to bring us back from their heyday, too. There are a few great films. Did you know that they also did the very first dub to Castle in the Sky, Laputa? I didn't even know that. I didn't know there was another dub. Until I actually talked to Barbara Goodson a few years uh, afterwards. And I would like to compare those two. I'm actually going to look at just one performance or one character from the video for Castle in the Sky. And I can't really show video footage for the Disney version. Because that will get my ass, you know, copyright struck. But let's listen to clips of Muska from Castle in the Sky. Now, a lot of you guys know that he was played by, say, Mark Hamill when he did the uh, dub. But, like I said, there was another dub beforehand. And, personally, I would like to see this version of the movie myself. It's another one that I think that needs to get, you know, since they went and put the Lupin, Akira, and I think a couple of other films... The Project Eden movies, the Dirty Pair movies, all had the uh, streamlined track on it. I think that maybe Castle in the Sky and Kiki should be able to get these tracks on them too. But like I said, let's listen to voice comparisons just for the heck of it anyway. Just to show, hey, Streamline knew what they were doing and they didn't need to get uh, some kind of celebrity to do the voice. They got somebody who had acting experience that didn't have to do retakes over and over. And I'm not saying Mark Hamill doesn't have acting experience or Anna Paquin or any of the other voice actors that was chosen in the Disney dub. But I'm saying that they really didn't need to bother redubbing the movie because it was already done. It already had its wider audience. And that's why Streamline did this. To bring a localization of anime to us, to America, and they did that. 
without them, we wouldn't have the anime that we have today. But anyway, I'm getting off track here. Let's listen to the clip comparisons again. Thinking that Laputa is some kind of treasure island? The fact is, Laputa possessed enough scientific knowledge to be able to float in the sky. It was once a kingdom that governed and threatened the entire world. If such a horrible thing is still floating up there, you can understand what a threat it is to the peace of the world. She understand nothing. According to the legend, the same technology that kept Laputa airborne also made it a major power that once dominated the entire planet. If such a horrible thing is still floating up there, you can understand what a threat it is to the peace of the world. Now, I'm not going to get too into this one, but Lupin the Third Castle of Cagliastro also has two English dubs. Well, three if you count the cut version, but anyway... For a while, you could only really watch the Streamline one or the um, one that was later dubbed by Manga. Until the Blu-ray came out in, I think, 2013 or 2014, and they were able to put both tracks on there. So, I'm pretty sure people are well aware that there are two versions of this movie. But I'm going to go ahead and play clips anyway, just because. I like to pay homage to a great company. Well, actually, both companies were pretty good in this one. In fact, the Claypools actually give a pretty good nod to uh, Streamline when I talk, about, talk with them about it, especially in Lupin. They say that they did get a lot of uh, the voice work be to pay homage to the original dub to the series. So anyway, let's listen and compare anyhow the two Lupin. Running on phony money for centuries, Godo's counterfeiting scheme weakened all his enemies. Seemingly insignificant Cagliostro ruined the Bourbon dynasty. They caused the 1929 depression. They've secretly controlled global economics for centuries. Listen to me. I'll give you the secret of the rings. Then take the damn treasure and do what you want with it. In exchange, let the girl go. Set her free. Look. See the ram crest up there? That's the sun-washed ram on high, the hour keeper. There's a hole in each of its eyes where the rings go. Now let's talk My Neighbor Totoro. This one is actually more commonly known to have two dubs because people had the VHS to this one and it did get a DVD release for a short while. But unfortunately, when it did come out, Disney got the full rights to it they didn't put the other dub track on there. Now, that doesn't make much sense to me. They'll put the Japanese track on. They'll put the uh, subtitles with it. But they won't put the first English dub that gave the movie its history on there? That doesn't make any sense. Yet Funimation and Diotech can do that. That doesn't really make much sense. And honestly, Disney took a lot of liberties and kind of copied the voices in this. They mainly slapped on celebrity names like the Fanning Sisters. But honestly, the first dub to me was actually much better. But like I said, I'm not comparing what dub is better. I'm just doing what I'm doing. But let's listen anyway. Guess what, sis? I got one! Mm. Eh? Uh, well, you know how it is. I've been so busy in the rice paddies huh? lately. Oh just my gosh, how did you get all that black on you? I had a dust bunny right in my hand. <gasps> May, May, look at this bridge. A bridge? Mommy! Oh, hi, May. It's good to see you. Mommy, do you like haunted houses? Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, and some, some would see, Vampire Hunter D also got a redub too. For a while, the Streamline dub was the only one known, but now it seems that this newer dub that's come out is pretty well known too. And personally, I haven't seen the new dub. I've only seen the clips I'm about to show, the voice clips here. So, it's just my personal thought here. This will probably be the last clips I show for now of the anime uh comparison differences with the voices but it's only fair you and your sister are in for some rough times dan so go ahead and cry if you need to there's no shame in crying when there's good reason but in spite of what you're feeling inside 
What your sister needs right now is confidence, hope, and encouragement. She needs your smile, not your tears. Cry. How you choose to deal with it is up to you. But promise me one thing, Dan. If you're going to cry, don't do it around your sister. Hold it in. Tears are contagious, and right now she needs your hope and encouragement. Smile, even if it hurts. I'm sure you guys are wondering, why did I do this video? What, what was the point if I'm not going to give a full-out history lesson? This was a video done to pay homage to a company that launched anime to America. And I mean in the right way. Because beforehand we were getting edited, heavily edited, censored stuff, and it wasn't fair. And what we would get was lost in translation. So, what was the point of this video? I think that this company was a pioneering company that started everything, that began everything so well and perfectly done, that it deserves to have all its original dubs put, at least put in some kind of physical format. Kiki's, uh, Delivery Service, Castle in the Sky, um... My neighbor Totoro, they need to make this to where you could watch it in either way. And it's only fair to the company. Of course, the company uh, closed down in the late 90s or early 2000s, and that was the end of it. But we deserve to hear these again because these dubs was in our childhoods, in our past. It was launched to America, and it was really well done by Carl Mack, Jerry Beck, and Fred Patton and honestly I thank them all for the work that they have done for us these past years if it wasn't for them anime would not be dubbed to what it is today they were truly ahead of their time and Streamline was a company beyond ahead of its time now you see how anime has the original Japanese music with the English dubs and has everything to it and has a really good casting call. There's some people that are still working in anime today that was in Streamline Pictures. Some of them are familiar voices that you guys may know. Wendy Lee, Cam Clark, Steve Kramer. Several, several voices worked in Streamline Pictures and they are still voicing in anime today. I'm sure that they would love to hear their versions of their characters on a different DVD. And some of them have already gotten that, thank goodness. But some haven't. I have a lot of the VHSs, and the Kiki's Delivery Service and Castle in the Sky for the streamlined versions never got physical releases. And I think America, the world owes it to that company to make sure that they get physical DVD or Blu-ray releases, at least on a stream wave even, would be nice. So that's why I made this video, to give honor and memory to a company that well deserved it and that brought anime to America for us all. That's my video for now, and let me know what you think of this, and always remember, I'm listening. I have a very important question. Did you like what you saw? I'm betting you did. And if you did, you should like and subscribe to Mr. Tim's YouTube. Lots of awesome reviews, lists, interviews. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you're missing out. Always remember, he's listening.